All right there, folks. This is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video, and uh, Zendikar Rising has um, arised. So I think we'll be doing some uh, premier draft Zendikar Rising, and uh, from what I've heard, this is uh, considered a very excellent limited set. I've been calling it um, Dominaria 2.0. I think it's just because of the kicker mechanic, but overall, um, all the colors are very solid. Um, white might be slightly weaker than the rest of the other ones, just like it was in Dominaria due to the fact that um, um, the removal spell in the Hiri's Binding, good card, is still double white and a little bit difficult to cast. Um, but overall, it's still a very solid color. Um, I've spoken to a couple of people already, and um, blue have been particularly notable for being the best color. Um, not only is there so much amazing support for Demir in this set, but also uh, red-blue wizards. Um, and blue uh, definitely fit those archetypes very well. Um, um, and there's just a lot of support at common and uncommon, so um, I've been hearing a lot of people saying um, blue, black, and blue, red are considered the best archetypes. But overall, I think I think all the other colors are pretty solid. White being slightly weaker than the rest of them, but um, um, yeah, a lot of people have been giving a lot of rave reviews about the set um, because there's just so many viable archetypes in this set, many different directions that you can. Um, go towards and usually good bad limited environments are the ones where like a single one or two archetypes completely dominate the entire format and everything else becomes unplayable um like in icoria there was the uh red red uh red white cycling deck which completely dominated the format of course at 2021 had the, the um white was just completely busted in that set um but yeah i've um, been hearing a lot of good things about the set um, obviously, you know, the mirror is the best archetype, I think, by far, since there's just a lot of support for it, um, and a lot of removal in black, and excellent, um, mill synergy at common and uncommon, um, that, yeah, it's a, it's a very, um, good set, um, but overall, I still don't want to force any archetypes, I think I'm just gonna go into this clean, if I end up drafting white, I will draft white, but, yeah, let's fire one off, let's see how good it is. And I've been looking over a set already, and I think it's it's still I think it's a very solid set, and I have to agree. Um, and the thing about MDFC's modal dual face cards is I think they're a little bit overrated, um, but they're still pretty solid and limited. But I will definitely take a, a top common over a dual faced land, a modal dual face land if possible. So we'll see. Pack one, pick one, Zendikar Rising Draft. What do we have to find pleasure of opening today? What's our rare? Ooh, pretty powerful rare. And I did say dual face cards are kind of overrated, but this is definitely one I don't mind just taking immediately. Um, it is double black, but um, the fact that you can play this as a tap land or use it as a removal spell into speed is quite powerful. So obviously the first pick, um, some strong uncommons, Merfolk Wind Robber for the Demir Rogue decks, um, Skyclave Geopede is a is a good pack one pick one since it can trample for a lot of damage and then goma fat vanguard for the um, warriors deck in red white is quite nice looking at the commons the best one could just be um vanquish the weak as a solid removal spell um but overall i think the Hag hagra's mauling is the crack picked and you know i don't mind starting with black i think it's close to blue in terms of power level in this set that it's definitely a good first pick. And the fact that you can play this as a tap land is also nice. So, yeah, um, this is definitely one of the um, high power level MDFCs. So, I'm glad first picking it. But overall, I think it's still overrated, some of them. Okay, this is an um, okay MDFC, but I don't know if I should take it here. Um, good cards in this pack. There's a Skyclave Geopede for the Landfall decks. Um, Prowling Feldar has been quite an overperformer too, but I think I would still prefer the Skyclave Geopede. There's a Skyclave Shadowcat if I want to be in the black green minus one minus one counter stack. And then there's Rabbit Bites and Feet of Swarm as solid um, cards at common. Um, first pick in Hagro's Mauling, I don't mind just sticking to black. Um, Malakir's Rebirth is okay, but I also think it's one of those um, overrated um, MDFCs. Like, you can maybe save a creature, but um, here I could just take a Feet to Swarm. Still keeps me in black. Um, I do lose life if I use this to kill a creature, but I don't think it's a big deal since um, 
if you use this on like a cheap creature, it's not not that big of a deal, and it's still a solid removal spell. Keeps me in black. Alternatively, if this was in this pack, um, maybe the Skyclave GOP'd as in just a solid, efficient creature. But we'll stick with black for now. Take the feet to swarm. Seems okay. We can set up a nice black deck with a lot of removal spells. Uh, Lithoform Splite, not really that amazing limited. It's mana fixing for black, which I don't think it's that great. Um, Rolling Vortex, um, also not that amazing. Um, yeah, just not super strong. Uh, the Akum Helen has been considered very overrated in this set, um, due to the fact that, um, there's a lot of three toughness blockers, two mana one threes, and, um, three mana one fourths, so it's a bit overrated, even though people did say this was a good card. Best common is Pride the Tazim Royal Mage, um, I think the Seafloor Stalker is okay, but it just, it's more for, like, a party-themed deck than a rogue deck. Could just take the Mind Carver, like... We could kind of uh, speculate onto Demir, and Mind Carver is going to be at best in Demir, and we can kind of cut off Black by taking this. Yeah, it's a solid weapon. Demir is the best archetype, and if we do manage to mill the opponent a bunch, this can be a nice weapon to play. So sure, let's take it here. Otherwise, I think I would take the Royal Mage here, but um, we'll stick to Black for now, in case that doesn't happen. Um, again, nothing amazing. There's a Makini's Stampede for the aggressive white decks. Um... But if we're going to be in white-black, I don't think we're going to be very aggressive. It's going to be a very grindy color where you're trying to drain the opponent per turn. Um, could just take the Nimona's Skitter Sneak. Um, pretty solid if you can mill the opponent. Could take a Seafloor Stalker, although there's not a lot of mill synergy with this card. It's just going to be like a fine 3-drop um, at the very least. I could just take a Subtle Strike. Like It still keeps me in black. I'm happy to play one copy. Um, in any black deck, and um, don't know if I want to commit to rogues yet, although I do have the mind carver. Let's just take the salt strike. Um, overall, this pack is not very exciting. Alright, uh, this is four warriors. Um, two mana, two, two, it's okay. Could just take a vanquish the week, like, probably the best common in this pack. Glacial's Grasp, also a nice, excellent overperformer for the Demir rogue deck. Um, a lot of people have been saying that Fireside Deb is. Top one of the top white commons, but the fact that it's symmetrical is not that amazing. So that's also another reason why white isn't super great in this set, because of cards like Fireside Depth also helping your opponent draw cards. Um, Paratactics is okay, um, but we'll take a Vanquish the week, stick with black for now. A lot of good black removal we're taking. Um, could take a Rabbit Bite. Ally the Salt is medium. Dauntless Unity is medium. Marauding Blight Priest. Decent if I end up in the um, black white uh, vamp life gain deck. Red worm is okay, but um, could just take a rabbit bites if we do end up in black green. Don't want to miss out on more removal. And seeing this kind of late is a sign, so we'll take it here. Um, okay, nothing amazing here. There's a living tempest, which is fine. Spitfire Legac, decent. Gruel, Drasmuk Lord isn't bad. Not an amazing card, though. Could still take it if I end up in black green, since it has the um, plus one, plus one counter synergy, which green is trying to do. We do have a subtle strike for black green, so yeah, let's try it out. Uh, Malakir's Blood Priest is okay. Um, could take a Turn Timber Aesthetic. Kite Cell Cleric, not super amazing, even if you kick it, still one mana, one, one. Could take a Dauntless Survivor for the plus one, plus one counter synergies. Um, I could just take the Malakir Blood Priest as well, like it's a fine card. Um, and it does, it's best in black-white. Um, could just take a Dawnless Survivor, I guess. If we do end up black-green, I don't want to miss out on the plus one, plus one counter synergy, so. You know, um, Iron Shell Beetle is still fine and limited. But overall, I don't think there was anything to stand out in, in the pack, so I don't mind just kind of forcing black green, even though I might not be in that archetype. Um, it's still, um, it's still, an, I, don't, I honestly don't think there was anything else super amazing. Mind Drain, I don't mind a copy if I end up in Demir Rogues. I, I don't want too many copies of Subtle Strike. Um, uh, Sneaking Guys, Medium. Uh, Goma Fan, Fado, Vanguard, best in the. Um, White, red, not necessarily in black, red party. So I think I'll just take a mind drain in case I end up in Demir. And it has some nice life gain synergy. Just being able to mill the opponent. A Skyclave Shadow Cat is pretty late. This is pretty good in the um, black, green, plus one, plus one counters deck. 
There's an Expedition Skulker, though, if I do end up in Demir. Um... Yeah, why not? I can just take the Skulker here if I end up in Demir, keep my options open. Actually, I'll just take the Uncommon. Uncommons are harder to get, and I've ended up in Black Green. I don't want to miss out on the Shadow Cat. So I'll take it here. Don't want to play Nithilform Blight. I guess there's a Nimina's um, Skitter Sneak. Pretty solid in Demir, so we'll take it here. And I'll take another Dauntless Survivor. Don't not big fan of the um, Oblivion's Hunger. Um, I mean, I guess it plays well in the black-green deck, but I'd rather just have another Dauntless Survivor. So two directions I can go. We're kind of in the... We're kind of in the, um... Um, Soul Tie colors here. Like, we could go Demir, or we can go Golgari. Um, we'll see. Okay, that's a pretty powerful bomb. Okay. Yeah, and it has nice, um... Yeah, this is obviously the first pick. Uh, what are good cards in this pack? Jurari's Disruption's okay. Fireblade Charger for Red White. Fastwood Surge, also pretty strong for the Landfall decks. Um, looking at the commons, there is a Royal Eruption. Gnarly Colony is fine. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty powerful bomb. Easily one of the best cards in this set. Probably the best black card in this set. Um, obviously, nice if you. it's nice if you have stuff in your graveyard. But even then, the creature ends uh, has a 1-1 counter onto it, so it's good in black-green, but... Um, yeah, easily the best card here. Also Vampire Cleric for those um, Cleric Synergies if we do end up in black-white. So, easy first pick, and um, also in considered the best or the second best color in this set. Let's take it here. Uh, Legion's Angel's alright. 4 mana, 4 three is fine. Double white is a little bit hard to cast. Um, but, you know, if you have... You can search another Legion Angel's busted, but it's going to be pretty difficult if it's that rare. There's a Kibira's Takedown, pretty solid. Um, also a nice dual land. Shire Skull Minotaur for the party deck can be fine. Skyclave Geopede. Yeah, overall this pack is not too exciting. Um, I think the best cards are like the Skyclave Geopede and the Kabira's Takedown. Um, go, could go any direction. Shire Skull Minotaur, fine if you have the black red party deck, but I think I'd rather have a Skyclave Geopede. Eh, I don't know. Both of these cards aren't super amazing. Could just take the Kabira's Takedown. Don't have a lot of life gain synergy for the black white, but it could be open, and this is a nice MDFC, so. Eh, we'll take it here. I could be wrong. Maybe the Skyclave GOP is the correct choice. Uh, there's another Kabira's Takedown. Could take another Feed to Swarm, which is alright. Could just take the Scythe Cat. This is probably one of the best green commons in this set. And we do have a pretty decent setup for the black green plus one plus one counters deck. Like the fact that this can landfall and just gain you counters is quite strong. Um. There's also Prowling Feldar, Feldar, also a pretty solid overperformer. Feed the Swarm is fine, but if you take too many, you lose a lot of life. We have a lot of removal already in Vanquish the Week. Um, the, the Tap Land, um, Cell Strike, Rabbit Bite. So I could just speculate on the Territorial Scythe Cat here. And I, yeah, and this also gains plus one, plus one counters. So it looks pretty strong. And there's a Hagara's Constrictor for the plus one, plus one counters theme, giving all of our plus one, plus one counter creatures menace. Which is quite strong. Um, this is a fine card. It's decent party deck and it's a nice card draw engine if you end up in a black red party, which could be the open archetype. But eh, it seems like we're kind of heading into the um, pl plus one plus one counters direction. Um, so the Hagra's Constrictor is pretty solid with that theme. And yeah, I don't mind just going black green here since it was pretty open in our first pack. Um, another Rabbit Bite looks excellent. Pretty late, so it's a good sign. Taunting Arbor Mage, fine card. Not super amazing since it's pretty expensive to kick. And you need large creatures with it. Wouldn't mind a Dreadworm at the top end, but I'm not going to take it over a Rabbit Bite. Glacial Grass, also pretty decent Demir. So yeah, it seems like we're going to be in Black Green. Plus one, plus one counters. Ooh, Draga's Visionary. Um, I've been hearing a lot of good um, stories about this card. Solid 4-drop that replaces itself. So it can be a solid 2-for-1. Blood Price is okay, just a bad... Um, um, Dark Bargain, Malakir Blood Priest is okay, Nemana's Skitter Sneak, good for Demir, Elate Nahiri's Binding, but again, I've been saying that Double White is a little bit difficult to cast, so that makes White a little bit worse in this set, but I'll take a Jiraga's Visionary, and then we'll just kind of force ourselves into the Black Green plus one plus one counter stack. So Mind Carver is not going to be in this deck. Um, could take another Hagra's Constrictor, Late Ra Ravager's Mace, so the Black Red um, Agra Party deck could be open. Um, could take a turn timber aesthetic, but I think we just want to maximize on the plus one plus one counter synergy. So I think I'll just take the Hagra's Constrictor here, 
And, uh, well, I don't mind a Gnarled. Um, it's a fine 2-drop, and we can also kick it. Grogger's Visionary is also pretty strong, but um, I think I just want to sure up my 2-drop department here. And then make sure I have enough to stabilize in the early game. And then, even then, if we kick this, it's pretty nice. And it has nice salt synergy with the plus 1, plus 1 counters um, in this archetype, so I don't hate it here. Let's take the 2-drop. Maybe ditch the Skitter Sneak, and I can also just take a turn Timber Aesthetic as a solid um, Curve Topper in this deck. Um, so yeah, the deck is building itself. We have a good amount of interactions, some decent solid threats on the battlefield, on the ground. So uh, wouldn't, also wouldn't mind Marasa Brute for party synergies. Might not make it, but we'll see. Still 3 mana, 3 3 isn't bad. Helps gum up the ground pretty solid in this deck. Um, I don't think we're focusing on the party mechanics, so I don't think the Seagate Colossus is great. However, Gruel draws Mucklord, has synergy, so don't mind if I do. And uh, Tajuru's Blight Blade, pretty solid one drop. Um, can pro play, play defense in the early game. So Black Green is mostly going to be a mid range deck. We're not trying to be hyper aggressive, so um, a card like this can be pretty solid if we need to defend against aggro. And even the late Broken Wings. So, yeah, pretty solid deck. I think we found our archetype. I think I'm happy with what we have. We have a lot of good solid removal. Some um, solid, decent creatures. Orn Reef Ooze. Um, yeah, perfect card for this deck. Another powerful rare. Um, since um, you can put the counter onto the Orn Reef Ooze itself. And it can start gaining counters. And we have a lot of creatures that can generate counters too. So, easy first pick. Um, most powerful card in the pack. Other great cards. Tazim. Royal Mage for the Wizards control deck can be pretty solid. Um, Skyclave Geopede, good, excellent landfall creature. Um, Vastwood Fortification I also wouldn't mind, even though it can come into the battlefield tapped. can give us a bunch of plus one, plus one counters, but I'm not going to miss out on a... I'm not going to take it over a great card like the Orn Reef Ooze here. Great Synergy. Ooh, Aura, Skyclave, Hierophant. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of Clerics to go along with this. Um, we have the turn Simber Aesthetic, but that's pretty much it. Um, don't think we're going Rogues. Shadow Stinger, also don't think we're going Rogues. Um, could just take another Jiraga's Visionary. There's also another Rabbit Bite. But I think the Visionary is just better for us here. Replaces itself, good 4-drop. And we have a lot of interaction already. Double Rabbit Bite. Vanquish the Weak. Um, uh, sorry. Um, um, feed the Swarm. I just want to ensure that we have more playables and creatures, so... Um, yeah, maybe we can wheel a better removal spell. Like, Rabbit Bite is good with the Terujuru's Blight Blade, but I think... I think we need more threats, and that's a fine one. Okay, um... At the beginning of your end step, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token for each one, one... Okay, so this card's pretty broken in our deck. I'm obviously going to take it here. Otherwise, like, Kazandu Stomper is pretty solid, but we're not really a landfall deck. Um, yeah, the best card in this pack is Low Mage's Domination, a Mythic Uncommon, especially in this for Demir in this set since it's so well supported. Like, it's easy just to, to just first pick this even though it locks you into black-blue. Demir is, again, another amazing supported color in this set, so Low Mage's Domination. Seeing this being passed to me is a sign Demir was open, but I think we committed to um, black-green quite nicely, and uh, I think I'm just going to take an Iridescent Worm Beetle here. Um, another Deadly Alliance, probably the best common in this set. Even though we might not have a lot of um, party members, it's still pretty strong. Like, even casting this for 4 mana can be quite nice. Um, and it just kills things, so I don't mind just taking a Deadly Alliance here. I think it beats everything else. Best card in the pack overall. Another solid removal spell for a deck. Coveted Prize. Um, Search for our library. We have a party. This, you may cast a spell from a mana cost. So this is a good card for a party deck, but I don't think we're going that to that direction. Could take a Ghastly Gloom Hunter. Like, it's pretty solid if you can kick this. Um, it is 6 mana to kick, though. Um, but Sol, I don't think we're splashing. Um, yeah, I don't think we're doing the party thing. Let's just take a Ghastly Gloom Hunter. It's it's pretty nice if we can kick this. Veteran Adventurer is quite strong. Um, don't think we're milling them. Adventures of Weight is medium. Yeah, I don't mind just taking a Veteran Adventurer. Um, it we might play it or we might not. We do have a warrior, a rogue, a, and a wizard, um, and Marasa Brute's also a warrior, so um, we also have a cleric with Turn Timber Aesthetic, and, you know, it's just a solid card, so we might or might not play it, but we'll see. Um, Highborn Vampire, okay. I uh, don't think we're going uh, wizards for the Relic Amulet. 
Let's just put this. Uh, maybe, maybe the Might of Marasa is playable, but I highly doubt it. Drawn a Silencer. We're not really a party theme deck. Um, choose a target creature in control and draw. Put a 1 1 counter on for each creature in the party. I guess we'll most we'll end up playing this more, but again, we're not focusing on the party theme too much, so I'll take it regardless. Could just take another Tajuru's Blight Blade. Um, scale the Heights can help us ramp. Don't think I'm doing the Stomper. Yeah, I just take another Blight Blade. And on late feet, the Swarm. Let's take it here. I don't know if I'm going to end up playing. I could just take Oblivion's Hunger, though. For the minus one, minus one counter synergies. I mean, the plus one, plus one counter synergies. But I still don't think it's that necessary. I have a million of these, so I don't think I need the Gruul Draz Mucklord. I don't even think it's that good, even though it's in our deck. Even though it has synergy, I still don't think it's like an amazing card. So we have a bunch of playables. We just need to figure out what we're going to be playing. Um, so Cliffhaven Kite Sail might be a maybe, since we're mostly going to be attacking on the ground. We meet, might need some evasion, so it's a maybe. I don't mind one copy of Tajuru's Blight Blade. Um, Feed the Swarm, I don't mind a copy of as well. We'll put in a side as interaction. Cell Strike is also good down one. Could or could not play the um, Ghastly Gloom Hunter. It's pretty expensive to kick um, for six mana. Um, but it can be a fine win condition in the late game, but I still don't know if we're going to end up playing it, so I'm going to put it on the maybe pile. Dauntless Survivor is perfect, can put a bunch of plus one, plus one counter synergies. Decent, um, decent, um, synergy in the deck and has relevant party synergies. Gnarly Colony is fine. You can play it as a two mana, two, two, or you can kick it for five mana to gain a bunch of counters. Definitely better than a Ghastly Gloom Hunter in this deck, I think. Um, Rabbit Bite, um, solid. Removal spell, um, don't mind a copy. Ghoul Draft's Mucklord, even though it has a plus one, plus one counter synergy, it does need to die, so I could see myself cutting one. Hagra's Constrictor, pretty solid, especially um, in this plus one, plus one counters deck. Not only does it gain counters, but it gives everything else mana, so I don't mind two copies. Vanquish the Weak is quite nice. Marasa Brutes, maybe, doesn't make the cut. A three mana, three, three is okay, um, but just doesn't have any synergy besides a party mechanic. So it's also questionable where now I want to play the Veteran's Adventure. Decent top-end card, but could be a little bit difficult to cast. Um, Territory of Scythecat is always good. Orn Reap Ooze is always solid. Um, Skyclave Shadowcat, pretty solid too. Um, just to have value in the deck. And then if any of those plus one, plus one creatures die, you just draw a card. So that's quite nice. Hagra's Mauling, we could play it as a land or a creature. So uh, I'm or a removal spell. So... Um, I don't know if we could just cut a land from this deck. Um, since most of the time I don't know if we're, we're going to end up playing it as a land or not. So I could cut a land from this deck. Delhi Alliance is always amazing. Um, Drana, excellent Curve Topper. Iridescent Horn Beetle, excellent synergies for his deck. So I could just cut the Turn Timber aesthetic because I don't know if we're going to do the whole party thing. Um, like, you know, 5 mana 5 for is fine, but it's not going to trample. So I could cut it. Um, and the same argument goes, I have a warrior, an, a rogue, um, a wizard, and I guess I have a clear too, but we need, have, we need to have a bunch of them in the battlefield, and you know, this is not going to be great unless I can cast it for cheap, so I could see just cutting the veteran adventure here, and we can play the Marasa Brood, um, the Gloom Hunter is fine, 2 mana, 1, 1 lifelink isn't bad, and we can always kick it, and then Cliff Cell Haven also isn't bad, since we can also just, um, you know, have like another de a decent alternate wind condition in the air. We have two flyers, Ghastly Gloom Hunter and Drano, the last Blood Chief. Um, it's still a fine way to just give a creature flying to go over the top at the very least. And we can still run 16 lands with the Hagra's Mauling. This can still come in the, as a tap land. And we do have a lot of removal in this deck already. So, you know, it's not a bad deck. Um, overall, the creature quality is fine. Um, we're not, we don't have any large beatdown creatures like the Kazandu Stomper um, or the Veteran's Adventure, but I still think it's a little bit expensive to cast. Like, I could still play this, like, you know, yeah, I mean, I could see this as a solid curve topper, but what would we be cutting here? Um, I do want to kite, kite the Cliffhaven Kite Sail. Could just cut the Gloom Hunter. Like, a 2 mana 1 1 lifelink isn't great. And again, I've been staying 6 mana is a lot, so I could just cut the Gloom Hunter and actually just throw in this veteran adventure. Because even then, if we have like a visionary on the deck, this is still just a 5 mana 5 5 vigilance. And it plays well with the Cliff Haven Kite Sail. So I don't mind it here. Um, Turn Timber Stag, pretty solid beatdown creature, but again, I still don't think it's super relevant. 
Um, we have enough removal, don't need broken wings. My Ross is just fine pump trick, but I just rather just have solid removal spells instead. Um, Blight Blade, I think one is fine. Strength of Solidarity, we're not really doing party. Um, it does have plus one, plus one counter synergy. Um, so I actually don't hate it, but again, I don't think we're going that route. Um, three mana two two also isn't amazing, but it does have synergy in this deck, so I don't mind Hagris Constrictor. Again, Gruel Draws Muck Lord is fine. Um, although it's not an amazing card, it does need to die to trigger give those counters, so it might be a little bit too slow. So Gruel Draws is also not too high on. Um, Russell Brute is okay. Just a 3 mana 3-3 three, three is fine, like it's not a bad body, it's just solid. Um, yeah, the Gruel Draz is just a questionable card, I don't really like it that much. It's good to sacrifice it to the Sky Skyclave Shadowcat though, but overall I don't think um, we need it just for that. I like the Dauntless Survivors because they can already, we can already sack the Skyclave Shadowcat anyways. Um, so it could just take a Strength of Solidarity. Well, I, well, actually, no. I thought this goes wide, but it's kind of all in, anyways. Which it's not bad, like giving one of our creatures just a bunch of plus one, plus one counters. Even though we don't have a lot of, I mean, we have decent party synergy, but it's not super amazing. So I could see myself just cutting this. Like it's gonna be okay at the very least. I have a bunch of three drops already. Uh, Gloom Hunter is again solid. It's fine, but it's pretty pretty weak. Um, but what, what else would I take over it? Like, maybe the Tojuru Blight Blade can be okay, since we do have Double Rabbit Bite to go along with it. And this doesn't even beat down hard. Like, it has plus one, plus one counter synergy, but I still don't think it's that great, to be honest. Um, it can be okay, though. <laughs> How many creatures do we have? 16 creatures. Seems solid. Um, Blight Blade is just good to Rabbit Bites. It's a fine ground creature. And we, we have an okay way of closing out the game, maybe. Just going wide with the Iridescent Horn Beetle, flying over to Cl Cliff Sail, um, the Cliff, ha Cliff Haven Kite Sails, Veteran Adventure, pretty nice beatdown creature, Drana can fly over. Skyclave Shadowcat can grow large, even Jiraga can start beating down to Territorial Scythecat, or in Reef Ooze. So we do have some large creatures in this deck. Um, so yeah, let's try something like this, just a 60 lander um, with an okay curve. Let's try it. And, um, yeah, mana base, we could just keep it even split, 8-8, eight, eight, since we do have double black to cast this. Um, and we're going 60 land, so I think it's fine. We have some double black cards, so yeah, just going 8-8 eight, eight is okay. Um, um, what else? Hmm. Yeah, I just don't think it's that good. Like, if we kick this, but well, that's quite expensive, and this is just really clunky. I could just cut the Marasa Blue Brute, maybe. Like, we do have a rogue already, some warriors. Yeah, we'll just cut it. Maybe I just do play the muck lord here. Since as long as it dies, it still gives a minus, minus one, plus one, plus one counter. Like, even then, we're not all in with this veteran adventure. It's, it's just a fine card. Um, and we have a bunch of threes. I don't know if I want to just take another Gruel's muck, muck lord. It doesn't seem like an amazing card. It has synergy, but still not amazing. Yeah, let's try it like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven removal spells. Um, and the Cliffhaven Kite Sail is a decent alternate win condition if I need to fly over, which is also strong. I could consider another Feed the Swarm, but I don't want to lose too much life. Like, if I'm playing against an aggro deck, it can be kind of bad for me to lose a bunch of life. And we also were not really a life gain deck. Um, so yeah, let's try it. And the picture... Hmm. I don't think Drana fits the bill, or in Reef Ooze seems to make sense. Alright, let's try this out. Should be a pretty fun deck. Let's just make sure we have 6-8. We're going 8-8. Eight, eight. Yeah.
All right, opening hand. We do have a Dauntless Survivor. Probably have to play this as a tap land, but it's okay. Like, we do have a solid curve. Um, we're on the play, so I don't really want to go down the land. And this is pretty solid. We can put this, we can put a counter onto it, then play Hydra Constrictor and start beating down. Um, yeah, we can curl out the Orin Reef Ooze. So it seems pretty good. Let's keep. And I'll play this tapped. Like, I don't really want to play this tapped, but, I mean, I think we have to, just to have a solid curve. And we have some solid removal. Play green, we'll play our Dauntless Survivor. Next turn, the question is, do we play the Orin Reef Ooze, or do we play the Hagra Constrictor? Like, if we play the Ooze early, the Dauntless Survivor can grow. But I think we want to play the Hagra's Constrictor first, because he might have removal. And that can be kind of annoying. Um, don't think I need to Vanquish to weak that. Um, I think I don't mind just baiting with the Hagra's Constrictor. Because this is just a much more valuable card. You could just have a removal spell for this. Um, like, none of these survive roll Eruption. Could just free roll here. Now we'll just play the Hagra's Constrictor. And we can get in for two of Menace. Because I do want to pressure him a bit, even though we are more mid rangey than ag aggressive. Just ha curving out like this is quite strong. So if he stumbles on missing a creature or a land drop, then it's good. And here we're just baiting out with the Hagra Constrictor. I'm fine if he uses a removal spell on this. That's what I prefer, so then we can play out the Ooze next turn. And I'm definitely not going to block this. Yeah, just solid synergy. Iridescent Hornbeal on 5 will be pretty disgusting. We're just going to make a bunch of 1-1s one at the end of the turn. So everything is looking good here. And I think I put the counter onto the ooze itself. Um, So, like, we can go all in and then, like, the ooze also... I'm definitely not blocking this. He just gets a free, he can just pump and get a free kill here. What's this? Not an amazing card. Okay, I think we just drop the ooze here. And we'll put a counter onto the ooze, so then it can it can attack past the 1-3 next turn, and then it can become a 4-4. So everything's looking good, and then next turn we can also play out the Horn Beetle, which is quite gross. This card is just a powerful bomb, like, if you can't answer this and kills a melee, it's just game over. This card is really good. Probably has a removal spell for it, but what can you do? I mean, might as well play it out. I mean, we tried baiting with the Hagra's Constrictor already, but this is still fine. If he needs to spend his whole turn killing the Ooze, that's okay. We can still attack. He can double block one of them, but that's fine. Alright, um... I could attack here because I have to Vanquish the weak at instant speed. So let's do it. I'm not, I don't need to play the Iridescent Horn Beetle. It also only activates end step. But this is really powerful, like, just getting with all these um, menace creatures. And he needs a double block here. I can blow him out with the Vanquish the weak. Um, uh, which, which one do I want to kill? I think I want to kill the Teeter Peak Ambusher uh, first. Because even though this can give creatures haste, I'm already ahead. So I don't really care about him having, having haste creatures. Even though he pumps this, I can just answer it with Vanquish the weak. So this can be a total blowout here. Um... I think we do it now because he can um, he can grow it even larger. So this is a, just a really solid two for one already. So yeah, unless the opponent has some sort of board wipe, I don't think he can beat this. That's why I don't like combat tricks in limited because if you're behind and you need to use it on defense, you can get totally blown out by like Vanquish the weak, and you can get pretty you can get two for one like. Combat tricks are good if you're ahead and you're being aggressive and you just want a, like a cheap pump trick to um, get through and you're just always attacking. But it's not good to be using it on defense um, because it can lead to some really bad blowouts if the opponent has instant speed removal like this um, scenario. So, alright, easy first game. Let's see how far we go. Um, just focusing on maximizing our synergy, building the best deck possible, doing our best. Um, okay. Well, not an amazing hand. We're on a draw. I could risk it here. Like, with one single green mana, this hand is alright. We can still play the Hagros Constrictor on three. Yeah, we'll try it. I might miss out on my green land turn one, but that's fine. Well, now it's not that fine. Okay, never mind. I could Rabbit Bite next turn, so I don't need to trade off this, um, 
Tajuru's Light Blade necessarily. Because I might want a Rabbit Bite, so we'll take two here. We'll Rabbit Bite whatever he plays here. Yeah, I'll definitely Rabbit Bite the um, this card because it can grow pretty large, and we could trade. Then we can trade for the um, the um, Bud Bud Catcher. So this is pretty solid. Like I could just trade it right away, but I think this is just better. So I can just play something down on two and um, slow him down. Then we can trade for this Akum Hellhound. Then play out the Hagger Constrictor next turn, and then follow up the Visionary, and then play out the Veteran Adventure. So this is fine. I don't mind just blocking here. He's an aggro deck, so this is a solid trade. We used up our Rabbit Bite already. So this is quite good. Hagrid Constrictor can come in with Menace. It doesn't even block the Akum Hellhound profitably, so I'm quite happy to trade. This is a strong card. Um, I think I'm going to save the Mauling. Don't have to kill the 4-3 yet. I think I'm happy trading my Visionary for it. Um, or I don't have to trade it. I can take 4 and then um, follow up with the Veteran Adventurer. This is just really solid 2 for 1. It draws you a card ASAP. So I could just take four, play out the Veteran Adventure, and then like prepare a block next turn. Thundering Spark Mage. Okay, that's gonna kill my Visionary. Pretty solid there. Take four. Um. Okay. Orn Reef Ooze is quite nice. Don't think I need to keep up a removal spell. I mean, I could. Yeah, I could just keep up a removal spell here. Um. The Ooze is fine, but I don't really want to. Double block here. Like, I could just play the Ooze, trade for a 2 2, take 4. Or maybe I leave up, like, the Mauling, anyways, in case he has a pump spell. Yeah, let's just pass. I don't know if I need to use the Mauling on the 4 3 before damage happens. Probably might have to. Or use it against his other bomb that he might play. So I could just take 4 here, which I don't mind. Trade for the 2 2. If he passes priority, I'm going to use the Hagra's Mauling on the 4-3. Yeah, I'll use it now. I just don't want to take too much damage. It's too much damage here. He can use a Pump Spell to get past my Hagra, but I think this is fine here. And even if he uses the Pump, this is still 4. It's still 2-2 two, two at the end of the day. It's not going to do anything. So this is fine. Prevent a little bit of damage. Punch just passes. So now what I can do is I can play out the t Territorial Scythe Cat. Landfall. He can respond to this, but that's fine. And then I can play the ooze here. Put a counter on the ooze and we can start beating down. Pretty efficient turn for us. And then next turn we can follow the veteran adventurer. He probably has removal anyways. He's playing black red, so there's a lot of instant speed stuff going on. That's fine. The Toro Toro Scythe Cat is going to grow pretty large if he can't answer it. But he's probably holding a bunch of removal spells because he's been passing his turn a lot. Right, so hopefully this go gets through. I'm going to save the land. Um, actually, I don't have to save it, but there's really nothing else I want here. So I don't need to play it out. So even if I do get a creature next turn, I don't think I need to play it. Hopefully he doesn't have anything under Feed the Swarm. Okay, he loses six at least. But that's still pretty solid for him. All right, and we're just flooding, so we're just past the turn. We'll take one. It's not a big deal. Okay, hmm, this can grow pretty large. Okay, Mucklord is fine, even though it's not going to block nicely. He does have a nice engine with the sneaking guy and the Titter Peak Ambusher. So I'm just going to pass the turn. Yeah, this card is not that good. The Troll Warrior might actually just be better here. Yeah, I might just replace this with the Troll Warrior. Like, the 3 man 3 3 is just better than the 2 3. Like, I do need like another creature on the battlefield. For this to at least put a counter onto something. Okay, Ravager's Mace is quite strong. This also has Menace now, so I won't be able to block in. He can still pump. So, not doing great, unless I can set up some sort of double block or a way to kill this. Okay, had a removal spell anyways. Alright, we'll take four here. Alright, there's a Iridescent Horn Beetle, but we don't have any plus one plus one counters. Played anyways. Take a million damage next turn, and if I find a secondary blocker, I can double block this. Or he can just give this unblockable and just pump. But here, I, I, I so I need a removal spell for the Teeter, Teeter's Peak Ambusher. Otherwise, it's just game over. So I'm kind of surprised he didn't 
do the unblockable and pump because I think he would have gotten lethal. He would have a two turn clock. I mean, he would have one more turn to kill me, but now he's just putting himself into a two turn clock. Unless he can put another land pump this twice. So we'll see. We'll just stay back here. If he plays another land and pumps this twice, it's just game over here. But he's just giving me an extra turn if, unless he plays a land. He's just going to pump this twice, get up to um, 7 power and kill me. Not much I can do about it. But yeah, I don't like the Ghoul Draz Muck Lord. I think I'm going to play the Troll Warrior over it now. Like, sure, it has plus 1, plus 1 counters to energy, but it's just not a good card. Okay, so he's giving me an extra turn. I just need to kill the 4-3. Actually, he can make this unblockable too with the guide, so I think it's game over here. Yeah. Alright, yeah, we were flooding out. There's no way we're going to win that. Good games. Realize how bad this card is. I mean, I could still have it. Like, it's... It's still good if I'm, I have, like, multiple creatures on the ground, so maybe I just keep it up anyways. It's it's not a great card, though. I have to admit, it's kind of bad. Flooded out pretty badly. That, that last opponent, this previous opponent, had just a lot of removal. So, let's try to, um... Let's try it again. And we're not trying to cast a Veteran Adventure for cheap. It still has a 5 mana 5-5, five, five, regardless. Just quite unfortunate we fled out that game and the opponent just managed to deal with all our threats with his removal spells. Um, okay, not bad. We have a Blight Blade on 1 and follow up by Rabbit Fight, Bite, and then we have Hagrix Constrictor on 3. Yeah, it seems like a pretty solid curve. Another land gives us access to the most the best common in this set, Deadly Alliance. So, pretty solid keep. Pull Mulligan, okay. Island, okay. Territorial Scythe Cat is a nice turn 3 play. Do want to play around stuff, though. Maybe I play this out on turn 4, where I can play this and then play the land. Squid, I don't mind just rabbit biting away. Like, it's pretty annoying. I do want to play this tapped. But we'll do it on turn 3 of the Scythe Cat. For now, we'll hide our colors. We'll just Rapid Bite here. Attacking for 1. Could still save onto this. This is just such a good removal spell. But if I need to play it as a land, I'll play it as a land. Okay, I guess we'll play it as a land. Um, we'll, we'll just move to combat here. Um, he could have a Zulaport Duelist, so maybe no attacks. And getting him for one isn't that big deal. Let's just say no and just play the Hagrid's Constrictor here. I think he has a Flash creature here. Like he can he can flash out the Duelist here, ambush the one one, and um, we don't get any value off of it, so it's fine. Okay, fine cards he milled, but lands also aren't bad for us. And he needs to tap out this turn for a Blood Price, so I think we're still in decent shape, and we can eventually just cast this on turn four to kill something. Okay, we'll play a Territorial Scythe Cat first, and then next turn we can play the Sky, Clat, the Sky Cat. I just want to get the landfall value here and start pressuring him, and this also has Menace for the Hagra Constrictor. So the Hagra Constrictor also becomes a must-kill threat in this deck, with all the plus one, plus one counter synergies, because everything now has Menace. Ooh, Roost of Drakes, okay. Unfortunately, um... Okay, so this is, so with one black... Okay, just gonna get that back. We can still attack pass. If he wants to trade for my Tejuru Bloodblade, that's fine. I don't I don't hate that, but you can't block any of these because they have Menace. Yeah, he can't block any of this. If he trades for my Death Touch, that's fine too. I don't hate I don't hate it. Okay, that's good. So now he can't he doesn't have any extra creatures to double block. This is a totally fine trade. It does get rid of my um party, but that's okay. I just need one more land to um play out the um Deadly lines. I could play this tap. I think I'll save it for now. I don't want to. It's a little bit greedy, but it's if we don't get a land. I mean, it does give me access to Deadly Lines and Iridus and Horn Beetle, but I don't want to go all in just making sure I cast my five drops. I have enough lands in this deck. This is a fine card. It's not going to do anything. It's a little bit slow. The three farm definitely going to kill here. Um, so we could just landfall. Um, he can set up a decent double block.
Yeah, I think we just Deadly Alliance here. There's no reason not to. He doesn't have any good blocks. He can chump the 3-3. Three, three, that's fine. And we're just going to get him for a ton of damage here. Yeah, I don't think there's any outs. There's two Menace creatures he needs to deal with. Even the Squid putting up a double block is not going to be enough. I do have a removal spell at instant speed, so if he tries anything here, we're still in fine shape. Yeah, there's no way out this. So yeah, Demir, pretty fun, but we can still get there with the Black Reed plus one plus one mid-range deck as long as we have good synergy. I guess with, um, yeah, I, I guess with all the, um, the menacing going on, we don't need the flying wind condition. Like, we can still get there without it, so maybe we don't need, need the, maybe we don't need the equipment that gives flying. Yeah, maybe we don't need it, and we just, we could just play another threats. Like, another Gruel Draz Mucklord can be okay. Could just play another Feet to Swarm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven removal spells already. Yeah, I don't mind another feed to swarm. Sixteen threats. I don't really like the Grill Draws Muckler. In terms of power level, it's definitely lower than feed to swarm. Yeah, let's just throw another feed to swarm. I think it's a good card. Alternatively, I could just throw in like Marasa Brute as a fine three drop. Definitely lower power level than Feed to Swarm. But it's still fine nonetheless. I mean, this is just a two mana kill some kill anything, so it's still a really good card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight removal spells, sixteen creatures. I guess this counts as a removal spell as well. Um I mean I could just cut one blight blade. Like, sure, it's a Death Touch creature that goes along with Rabbit Bite, but it's still it's still not very impressive. Um, with all this removal, do we really need, like, double Tajuru Blight Blade? Like, it's a good ground creature to trade off, but maybe we just need a Marasa Brute, just as a tanky creature on turn 3. Yeah, we'll try it out like this. And it's also not bad with Rabbit Bite anyway, since it's still dealing 3 damage. Um, obviously I don't like the Gruel Draws Muck Lord, even in plus one, plus one counters, I think it's just really underwhelming. I should have rated this card a little bit lower. I don't know what I took this over, but I'm definitely going to rate it a lot lower now. Um, yeah, I guess we'll try it out like this. Alright, I can play this tapped, or just play it, play this on turn 1, play this turn on turn 2. Nah, we don't need to play this tapped. I think we can, yeah, we can definitely cast this and get a lot of good value. So we'll play out the turn 1 Tajuru Blight Blade here. Which again, I'd rather just have one copy, really. It just doesn't hit really hard. We could trade Blight Blades here, which I don't mind. Um, yeah, let's just offer to trade. I just want to get this out of my way so I can attack with the 2-2 Dauntless Survivor. Pretty solid card anyway. It's just a 2-man 2-2. Two, two. Still pretty strong. So, um, blue-green is the kicker deck. They're going to be focusing on kicking their spells. I don't think... Again, I don't think I need to play the Hagra's Mauling. I'm fine attacking for 2 here. He could have an Into the Royal. Nope, we'll just pass here. We'll eventually cast Drana, the last Blood Chief. Attack with it and get back to Tajuru. Tajuru's Blight Blade, unless he locks us down. Haunting Orb, Arbor Mage. Fine card. Nothing special. Alright, we'll just play out the Sky Cat. And then we can, this is a 3-3 that can, um, I guess I can sack this to draw a card, which is also nice. And this becomes a 4-4. Four four. That's also pretty neat. Um, yeah, I'll attack with the 3-3, three three, and if he tries something, I'll just use the mauling. Or I can sack the Dauntless Survivor, so this gives me a lot of flexibility. We'll just attack him for 3. 
Alright, I guess I'll just play the Muck Lord here. He can counter it, but who cares. Good stack fodder for the um, Skyclave. And we'll just keep this in our hand again, it's just a solid removal spell. I don't want to get too greedy just trying to cast this on curb or kick this. He could bounce here into the Royal Draw card, okay. That does set me back. So glad that I got him for 3 here. Scythecat is fine, I can kill that later. Ooh, the Ooze. Ooze is pretty strong. May I just replay the Sky Cat and hopefully it doesn't get countered? Yeah, let's just pass. I'm not going to play this. I'm fine taking three or four now, and then, like, we can deal with this later. Not really Colony, okay. I'm, I'm fine trading my 2-3 for the 3-2, if he wants to do that. Or I just offer a double block here. Okay, no double block. So land is good. I could attack with a 3-3 if he tries something, like a double block. I can still sack the Gouldraz Muck Lord. Um... Gives, I can put two counters on the Sky Cat. Alternatively, I can just pass the turn, play Drana. And hopefully he doesn't deal with Drana. Or I can just keep the Gnarled Colony, which is also fine. Like, I can still pay two to this and play Orin Reef Revoke Invoker. So I could just attack this with the Skyclave. So we'll just do that. I'll attack with the Skyclave. Goes for a double block. Okay, a triple block. So I guess I don't mind just trading for the Sky Cat here. Like, let's see. I could sack the Ghoul Draz here. What will happen? Um, so I will get a counter. This will become a 4 4. And then becomes a 5 5. No, I don't want to do that. Let's just kill a Sky Cat, I think. It's a fine trade. Um, yeah, fine trade I'm willing to make. And I guess Drana is fine. I could also just bait out with a Gnarly Colony. Yeah, I'll just play out Drana. I mean, he's tapped out. I don't think he has any counter spells for one mana. And then if this survives and if we can constantly attack with this, then it's quite good. I mean, he could just Rabbit Bite this, which would suck. But, I mean, he could have a counter spell anyways. Like, I can't play around it. I have to go for it here. Okay, Bubble Snare. I knew he had that. Yeah, that's fine. Not that fine, but it's still okay. Sure, I'll take six. It's not the end of the world. Mill two fine cards. They're not. They're fine. Wondering why he didn't attack the two three. I guess he doesn't want to take two. Soul Strike is not bad. Um, do I want to Orn Reef Ooze and then Soul Strike? Probably not. Let's just kick this Gnarled Colony. I don't have to trade for this yet. Um, we'll just pass the turn. We can still take four next turn and try to swing back and try something like a subtle strike. Or he could have something here like a bubble snare, okay. He's just tapping down everything. So I might have to kill this. I'm only just still taking four per turn, so it's not that big big of a deal. Feed the swarm isn't bad. Could just feed the swarm, lose two. Yeah, I think I want to feed the swarm first. Actually, I could have killed my own enchantment. Why didn't I think of that? I could have killed the enchantment and um. Yeah, I could kill the enchantment. Let's just play the Orn Reef Ooze here. Another powerful bomb that he has to deal with. Maybe we'll see a counter spell. No counters. Put on the ooze itself so they, then it can grow every single time we attack for a plus one plus one counter stuff. Yeah, I should have killed this bubble here. That's annoying. Yeah, that's really annoying. Um, yeah, we'll just pass here. Yeah, if I kill the bubble, maybe that was better since I could have swung in for four. Now I do have a rabbit bite, which I don't hate. And I have subtle strike too. I think we just attack with the muck lord and we try to block, we'll use a subtle strike. Don't think I need to necessarily use the um Okay, just passes here. Um, I could rabbit bite this. Like, do I want to? Like, it's not a bad idea. No, let's just pass a turn. 
Maybe a better, maybe Soul Strike is just better against him in this scenario. I'm definitely gonna kill that. Yeah, I'll do it end of turn. Just annoying blocker. And he has nothing, so this is fine. Visionary's good. Yes, yeah, play out Visionary. And then if we get a land, we can use a Rabbit Bite and maybe clear path. And I can offer to trade here too. I think we just do it now. And I'll, I'll target Drana in case he has like a bounce spell here. On the Drana. And he, if he's forced to bounce Drana, I'll just get back. So he needs to, maybe he, this makes it more likely he wants us to resolve. I'm hoping he has like into the Royal here. He, I mean, he could bounce his old Taunting Arbor Mage and draw a card, but he'd be taking a bunch of damage in the back. In the backswing, so. Yeah, Fetus Swarm is actually pretty good now. Like, even if you lose life, like, just losing one life to kill Bubble Snare is quite good. Let's see what tricks he has. Inscription of Abundance. Put two plus one plus one counters. Okay. Um, so this is going to be going five power. I can still use Subtle Strike here. This gets minus one, minus one, and um, do I really want to put a counter on the Drana? Nah, let's put on the uh, Visionary or Gruel Draz. Yeah, let's put on the Gruel Draz. Just... Yeah, even if he pumps this, this is gonna die, so that's fine. And I can get it for six for a ton of damage here. He gains a bunch of life, but that's fine. He doesn't draw any cards. His inscription didn't get too much value. Okay, this is gonna blink the Muck Lord back. I can still attack and offer trade here. Let's play out the Narjaraga Visionary first. This is just such a good card. Yeah, I don't mind just feeding the swarm and killing this. Or we can just attack, offer to trade. He takes two. Yeah, I'll just feed the swarm here. Actually, yeah, I did the same mistake. I should have killed a Bubble Snare. A little bit not very smart play, but as long as these three twos get in, we're good. Yeah, I should just kill the bubble snare, but it's still I guess it still doesn't untap. So I don't know. Cause Andu Stomper is fine. He needs like another I guess he can pl play out land, play another blocker. He can double block. Or we or we got him with the deadly lines. Let's just deadly lines this. And we can get in for a whole ton in this game over here. Alright, yeah, Feed the Swarm, pretty good card. Underrated it a bit, but... Because of the life loss is not great against aggro, but even then, if you kill an aggro creature early on, you just lose, like, what, one or two life? So Feed the Swarm is actually pretty good. So another reason why black is, like, another one of the best colors in the set as well. Maybe second from blue, but... Because of his solid removal spells, but blue just has better threats. Um... And just has a lot more synergy, so I think blue is still slightly higher than black, but black is still good. Let's keep playing. Alright, Hagrid's Constrictor on 3. Okay, not bad. It's a decent solid curve. We can play out the Dauntless Survivor, and then this will get menace once we play the Hagro Constrictor. And then, like, Deadly Alliance is still fine. We can still cast this for 4 over the Dauntless Survivor. It seems fine. It's easily the best common in the entire set. This card's so good. Even if not a lot... Even if... If you don't have a lot of party, it's still good. And, like, and like if you have a full party, it's even better. We'll play the Dauntless Survivor... First, because there's no difference between like Gnarly Colony and Dawn Survivor. Just this just has a counter, so then it plays well to follow up with the Hagra Constrictor, and then we can like turn four, play Territorial Scythe Cat, play the land, trigger landfall of it. So it seems pretty decent. Alternatively, I could just play out the Scythe Cat, 
But here, this is a good turn to just play out the Kagura Constrictor and attack for two, since it says Menace. And there's no reason to play the Territorial Scythe Cat, unless I want to attack with it next turn. I could just offer to trade two, which is not bad. So red green is a little bit more aggressive than black green. Um, it's a landfall archetype as well. Okay, land is good. I could play the scythe cat. Play land next turn. Play out the Hagrid constrictor. But let's play around some removal. I think the um, Scythe Cat is a little bit more important, and we can get in for two here. So if he Royal Eruption this, I'm, it's better off having him kill this, since the Scythe Cat can grow over time. And that's that may be more important. And then we can kick a Gnarled Colony at five, and that's quite strong. If that's fine, I'll take four, we can swing for four back. Um, I could block this. Like, it's actually not that bad of a block. Um, he could have a combat trick, and that's a complete blowout, so maybe I just take it here. We'll just try to race him, I think. Yeah, he could have that card that gives you a plus one, plus one counter for each party member on the one creature. Like, it can be a pretty nasty blowout. So I think I'm fine taking four. We can set maybe, like, a Deadly Alliance later. Um... But for now, I think it's correct to build the board and try to race him. Light Blade, okay, that's annoying. But as long as our creatures have Menace, that's good. I think it's time to play out the Scythe Cat, and we're here to play out the land. Because we just want to grow this. And then next turn, maybe we can decide between Visionary or the Deadly Alliance. Now this has Menace too. So this might prompt him to stay, on, stay back on defense. But overall, he doesn't have any good double blocks against, like, the Scythe Cat. Like, the 2-2s two are fine. Ooh, Journey, okay, for the Constrictor. Um, question is, do I want to block the Dauntless Survivor? Um, and I don't think we do. Like, sure, we take 4. I mean, this is pretty annoying. Maybe I do block it. Um, he's attacking the Blight Blade pretty interesting. I think he should be attacking the Dauntless Survivor here. But no, I think we're just going to kick a Gnarled Colony and maybe stay back. I could get value right now in attack. Uh, I think I'll keep the Dauntless Survivor to block the um, his Dauntless Survivor. Because I don't really want to use my removal spell or anything here. And then we'll just kick the Gnarled Colony. Actually, I guess it's double green to kick. Never mind. So we'll just play all the Jiraga Visionary instead. Then we can start attacking the Jiraga or offer it off as a trade. Huh. That's quite strong, Soul Strike killing off the 1-1, one, one, so maybe no attacks, so next turn we can set up like a Subtle Strike, taking out the Tijuru Blight Blade and then putting a counter onto one of our creatures. I mean, even if he pumps the Blight Blade, the good news is that um, we can still Subtle Strike in response. Alternatively, there's a Gnarly Colony we can just kick. We can, we can just build up a stronger board. Huh. Pretty interesting here. Yeah, let's do the Gnarly Colony first. I don't think we need to get greedy with the Subtle Strike. We can still set up a large board. Next turn, we'll decide if we want to do that or not. Or we just attack with the 3 2 anyways. Yeah, let's attack with the 3 2. Even if he blocks it to Drew with Blight Blade, it's not the most impressive trade. Because he wants to keep the Woman back for the Gnarly Colony. So, even if we don't get a free kill on the Blight Blade, it's still fine. We get him for three. Okay, he might have a pump trick. That's fine. Okay, no pumps. I mean, that's the worst creature for us, for him to kill. Um, so, I don't mind just trading for this Blight Blade because it's pretty annoying. And he might have something. Okay, th that's a bomb. That needs to go. Um, he played land first, so I I'm definitely going to kill it. It's, it's not even a question here. And I can just blow him out with the Scythe Cat if he wants to block my Scythe Cat here, so. We have a Soul Strike to not only pump our creature, but also kill a 1-1 one -one Swarm token.
So this is a huge blowout. We trample for Tan and then... He should have kept the land with the Phylaf. I don't know what he was thinking. But I think he just wanted to have a body on board so he doesn't get run over by my creatures. But yeah, this is this is easily the best card in the entire set. It's so broken. It's not even funny. The card is completely busted. You can play the Scavenge Blade, maybe Trey for Dauntless Survivor. Which still isn't that great, I don't think. But we'll just put a counter onto the Dauntless Survivor here anyways. Oh, Constructor, never mind. He needs to set up a double block. So that's even better. Um, I could just offer a trade here. No. Let's just put a counter onto the um, Dauntless Survivor here so then we can get it for a clean attack. So then he doesn't have any good blocks here. He needs to put all of his uh, creatures to survive. And he won't be able to kill my 3 3 here unless he has a pump trick. I'll kill the blade creature because he needs to pay mana to re-equip it. Yeah, he's he's gone. But yeah, Philaf is easily lead the best card in the entire set. That card is really broken. Like, even if you kill it, like, it still makes like a 4-4. Once you play a land after you play Philaf. But I think he was just really desperate. He needed the extra blocker. So he decided to cast it um, post landfall. Alright, deck is doing good, amazing synergy, haven't run into any issues yet, just lost one game. We want, got back most of our gems, we're happy to fire off another Zendikar Rising Draft. Let's keep playing this out and get a nice 7 win victory to upload. Alright, opening hand, Dauntless Survivor on 2, yeah, Scythe Cat, Skyclave, it seems solid. Don't hate it. Just a solid curve is what we're looking for. And we can play this out on turn 3, trigger Landfall, play the Sky Cat. I don't care if this gets countered. Do we need to show him the second secondary color yet? Not really. We only have two double black cards. So I'm playing fine playing out the green for now, put the counter onto this. Yeah, this is a great common. I think this might be the second best green common behind Rabbit Bite, or it can even be better than Rabbit Bite. It's like a must answer threat immediately that just grows over time. Does he Royal Mage as a blocker? Okay. Just play out the Scythe Cat. There's no need for me to vanquish a week just yet. That's a little bit greedy. We'll just stay back. Um, don't think I want to trade for this. Next turn, we can play Land, Trigger Landfall, play the Sky Cave Shadow Cat. He, we need to stack a creature. I, I'm obviously just going to stack the Dauntless Survivor here. Like, it does have plus one, plus one counter synergy, but the Scythe Cat is obviously the better card. So we'll just play land here, play out this Skyclave Shadow Cat, and if he kills this Skyclave Shadow Cat, we draw a card, which is really good. So this is also pretty nice on common, so I'm glad I picked this up over a common spell that we could have gotten. But now we can just grow, grow our creature. This is going to be a pretty difficult creature to attack past. But now what we can do is we can play land, trigger landfall, play out the Orin Reef Ooze. Um, do I want to put the counter on Ooze? I guess I do. And then I guess we can even play the Dauntless Survivor here. Um, if I put on the Dauntless Survivor itself, I guess it can become the 3-3. Three, three. Although I do want to maybe sack with the Skyclave Shadow Cat. Um, maybe it's better just put on the Skyclave. Yeah, I'll put on the Skyclave. Just better, so because I might sack this next turn. And this will only gain Indestructible on his turn, because he needs to use Landfall on his turn. And I'm fine taking 5. This is a really solid board. He needs to keep everything back on defense. Ooh, Hagros Constrictor is really broken. So now what we can do is we can play out the land. Play out the Hagros Constrictor. And I guess we attack with Vol. I don't mind attacking the Dauntless Survivor. And this is really broken. Um, he might just double block the Orn Reef Ooze. I guess I'll just kill the Dreadworm. Offer the trade. It's fine enough with me. He's already at 8, so I don't mind trading it. I still draw a card, which is completely busted. And we can pass the turn and keep up like Vanquish a Week and the activate ability from Skyclave Shadow Cat. So the synergies are definitely getting there. 
Um, I don't think I care about that. Okay, 12, so 5, 6, 7, 8. I guess we have 12 once we kill the... Yeah, we'll just vanquish the weak now so he doesn't pop his creature and we can... Then we can just swing back for a lethal. Yeah, this is lethal. Opponent doesn't really seem to have a really synergistic deck, just forcing blue-black, it looks like. Alright, so sweet, 5-1, and one. Um, two more victories, we can finally um, get our 7 wins, show off this cool video. Our first Zendikar Rising Premier Draft. Goes to show you how important synergy is in limited. Um, it's like some cards are good by themselves, they can be played in any deck, but sometimes you really need to keep an eye out, because sometimes um, there's a lot of commons in this set that are actually gold cards. Same with the uncommons. So, like, I definitely don't want any mill, mill synergy in the black-green plus one plus one counters deck. So, um, I'm glad that we drafted this nicely. So, let's let's move on. Five and one. This deck is doing really strong. The Hagros Constrictor is doing an amazing job. And then we just have Lost Saw removal, a lot of powerful bombs in this deck. So, um, okay, this could be our first bad hand. Um... We could just play out the Hagra's Mauling Tap. I'm not against that. Like, just curve out Hagra's Constrictor into Iridescent Horn Beetle. We're also on a draw, so yeah, we'll try it. We have a Feed to Swarm, so I'll strike to deal with any small one toughness creatures early on, so I don't mind just playing this tapped. And it does it seems like a fine hand. And opponent also molds, so it's better for us, anyways. Ooh, we could get greedy here. Yeah, let's get greedy. This is just so good. I don't really want to cast this as a land. So we're going to get greedy. We even top deck a 2-drop to follow up for our Hagro Constrictor, so it's quite nice. And then if we, ca we can cast this on 5, it's almost near, like, it almost just becomes an insane bomb if we cast this on 5 and everything survives. That's an easy kill. We have to feed the Swarm that. I'm not going to let that survive. Um, yeah, let's kill it now before it gets out of hand. This is just such a broken card, and you have to deal with this immediately. I would love to Rabbit Bite it, but I'm fine just killing it. Barasa Brood. Mm. I could just attack and use Subtle Strike. I don't mind just doing it. Like, I'll shrink it down, pump my Dauntless Survivor. Okay, obviously he doesn't fall for it. He knows we have a combat trick. Let's play the Hagris Constrictor. Um. Uh, yeah, we'll play Tap now. It's a little bit too greedy keeping up, I think. Because I'm missing my land drops. And now that I think about it, I think we have to. Because we might not get the double black to cast this. If I did, I would be happy, but no. Probably Rabbit Bite here. Okay, we'll take three. May just play another Hagra's Constrictor or keep up, like, Subtle Strike. Okay, Drawn is quite good. So I'm happy that I've actually played out the land. We'll get him for two. Play more Constrictors. If we get a land, we can drop Iridescent Horn Beetle, make a bunch of 1 1 tokens to chump block this over time. And it's just a good block for the 3 3, so I don't mind just taking three back here. Yeah, we're not blocking this. No way. We can outrace them if we could drop this and just generate a bunch of 1-1s. One okay, that's a scary card. Um, but it doesn't have Trample. Unfortunately, no lands. Um, so, I guess we're just going to attack and then we'll play the Marasa Mar Brutes. Um, and then we can take damage and then, like, set up the Rabbit Bite for next turn. Okay, so I'll be taking 6, maybe trade for the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I think I have to block like this. I don't want to take too much damage. I could have set up the Rabbit Bite, but... I think I'm just going to have to hope that I get a land drop. Okay, that's a scary card. So that might just cost me the game now. So now he can landfall, but I guess we can chump. Alright, unfortunately this isn't good. Missing out the land drop is just bad. So I should have just taken it maybe and used a Bite on the Canopy Bailoff. But now I guess I'm forced to stay back on defense and chump. Yeah, it doesn't seem good here. The fact that this becomes a 6-6 six, six is quite gross. I don't think Soul Strike is going to do it here. This Stomper is just too big. Uh, so I'm forced to Chomp. Um, chomp with both. I guess... I guess I'm forced to put every creature in front, so never mind. It's just game over. Missed out on the land drop too soon. Decent hand if we got land, like, but... 
close game. Um, all right, so we might not get our seven wins. If we get our up to six wins, I'm still happy with this draft overall. Still got back all, most of our gems. Did an amazing job drafting this. But I, I, I spoke too soon, got a little bit too cocky with this deck. But we are running 17 lands with the Hagra, so I don't want to prone myself to Flood. Let's just try to get in for 7 or 6 wins, and we're still fine. Okay, opening hand, we have Drana. I don't mind a Gnarly Colony on 2, or Reef Ooze on 3 is really strong. Let's keep. We're also on the play, so obviously you don't want a mulligan on the play, usually. We'll just leave with a Gnarled Colony. Mm, yep. Yeah. And then we'll play out the Orn Reef Ooze. We get another land. We can um, play the Visionary. So, Blue Red Wizards. Okay. Could see a counter spell. Let's just move the attacks. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any two powered flash creatures here. I think I just want to get in some damage. We'll play the ooze. We'll play the ooze onto itself. I mean, I could play on the Gnarled Colony, but you could have a counter spell here, anyways. Yeah, keeping it up for two mana makes sense. But there's no way I wasn't gonna ever play not play into that. I need to develop my board. The game plan is to develop against this opponent since he's might be playing a more controlling deck. Sure, land would be great off the top. Fortunately, no land, so we'll just pass. Hopefully we don't get a tap land, since we're definitely going to lose tempo here. Okay, land is good. Now what we can do is we can just play out the Draga Visionary and um, increase our chances of getting a land drop, so we can play out Drana. Probably play Drana next turn, take three. Another Diviner, okay, so he's going to draw cards off of this. So... I could, I, I can't double rabbit bites, but I, I have to play out Drana here. We have to get it going. Attack for three, so he's forced to use like a removal spell on this, and then um, attack me for six. I hate how this draws him a card when we kill a wizard, so it's kind of like we can't deal anything against that. But the fact that this can bring out, okay, relic amulet is fine, but he's forced to stay back. Oh no, not bubble snare. So feed a swarm wouldn't be bad. I guess I'm taking six. He draws a card if I kill one of these. Vanquish the weak. Okay, that's not bad. I think I have to do it now. I, don't, I can't take a million damage here. He's, he, I guess he just draws one card. And we'll just wrap it by the way the other one. Don't want to take too much aerial damage. Just need to play defense here. Swing back for three. And once we get feed the swarm, we can take, take, out, take out this bubble snare. So hopefully he doesn't have any more tempo. Okay, um, let's play land, move the tax. Could have saved the land for um, landfall, but I think I'm fine doing this. Hmm, and I'll play the sky cat maybe. It's a little bit mana inefficient, but I could just stack Drana. We'll see. I don't. The Iridescent Horn Beetle is fine, but I could sack Drana end of turn, play the Iridescent Horn Beetle, start making a bunch of 1 1s. Like, I still don't mind, like. Yeah, I guess that's fine. He can eventually use a Relic Amulet to kill my 3 2. The Mauling isn't bad. Do I want to save my Rabbit Bite? I don't mind the trade because he can eventually he can eventually just kill my creature of the amulet anyways. And rabbit bite isn't gets his speed. I'll just play the horn beetle. It's a good blocker against the three two. We'll pass a turn, and then maybe we can start putting counters. We can play the shao cat, sack drawn the next turn, start making beetles. That's fine. I mean, he can kill my Draga Visionary, but that's for two, so I could just kill the um, Cunning Geyser Mage. Guess he might try to use a Relic Amulet on the 3 4. Do I mind blocking? Like, it's not a bad idea. 
Just a good block. I mean, even if he uses this to kill a Draga Visionary, that's okay, I think. Or... Yeah, I'll just take three. I can just Rabbit Bite this next turn. And then, yeah, I, should, yeah, I have Agra's Mauling up, so what I can do is I can kill off the 3-2. Let's see what he has here. And I have Hagrid's Mauling in response in case he tries something. I have Lethal, so he's maybe he might be forced to block here. I can Mauling this, but he's just going to kill my 3-2. So I think I'm just going to attack with both and see what happens. Fine. Um, I don't think he's going to deal 8 to me. I'm just going to play out the Shadow Cat. And he's forced to chomp next turn. Like, I, I'd rather be greedy with this because he could have like a really big blocker, like a 4-4 four -four that's in the way that I need to deal with. Okay. At least that only kills the creature. I mean, I guess that deals face damage to me as well. Yeah, let's just kill them all or now. The Expedition Diviner. Getting for lethal. Hopefully he doesn't have a Hexproof Trigger. He's holding a Priority Relic Amulet. Please just die. Yeah, we got him. Okay, 6 and 2. Not bad. Didn't get to uh, trigger the Horn Beetle this game. But it was close. If the Shadow Cat survived. I must start pooping out 1-1s. One but Blue Red Temple also has a lot of removal spells and stuff. So. We got a bunch of gold. Alright, um, final boss. Let's do a quick overview of this deck. Alright, just a plus one, plus one counters uh, mid-range deck. In terms of interaction, we have a bunch of them. Um, double feed the swarm, pretty solid. Even though you do lose life, like you don't mind. The fact that this in exile, destroy enchantments can be quite nice against Bubble Snare, um, Journey to Oblivion, and um, even the Hiri's Binding. And like using this on like an early creature that the opponent has is also pretty decent. Like you're gonna, it's almost like you're gonna take the hit from the creature anyways, but you're gonna kill it. So definitely another strong black removal spell that I was a little bit low on since. If you're playing against an aggro deck and they're always dealing damage to you, it can a little be, be a little bit bad. But this has been... Uh, the fact that you can destroy enchantments is quite powerful. So this is definitely um, a sleeper. A bit of a sleeper in this set. Um, even though you rather have Deadly Alliance, obviously, because you don't lose life. Uh, still a good reason why black is considered maybe the best, strongest color, or even the second strongest color in the set, because of Feed the Swarm. Great card. Um, Subtle Strike, don't mind having a copy. Like... You even this is just a nice combat trick that can lead to a nice blowout. Maybe just shrinking the opponent's creature and putting a counter on yours. Has also has a nice plus one plus one counter synergy in this deck, so pretty solid. Red bite, probably our worst removal spell, but still solid with the Terugia's Blight Blade. You can still cast that sorcery speed for cheap, and then you can respond if the opponent uses any um into speed spells with like a deadly alliance or the um the Hagra's mauling, which is our first pick. Pretty strong, nice, pretty excellent first pick to a draft. Um, I think um, all of our first picks made it into the deck. There was a Hagra's Mauling, and then Drana, and then um, Orn Reef Ooze. So, kind of got lucky with this draft, um, picking up our powerful uh, rares, um, pack one, pick ones, um, and they all kind of just synergize very well. Drana can still get back creatures with plus one, plus one counters with it. Um, this just this is just insane with a plus one, plus one counters deck, and then Hagra's Mauling, just an excellent versatile um, versatile um, Removal spell slash land, um, or decent two drops. Not a lot since we're really a mid range deck. Um, we're not really looking to be super aggressive early in the game. We're just looking to just build up a curve in the early game to maybe trade off some creatures and then um, um, have value with them later. Either kicking the gnarly colony or giving menace with the um, Hagris constrictor or drawing cards off the Skyclave Shadowcat. Um, weakest common overall, I say it's either. I mean, weakest card overall in the foot is either the Gruel Draws Mucklord or the. Um, 
Marasa Brood. It's arguable that Marasa Brood can even be better than the Grill Draws Mucklord since it's just a solid 3 man 3 3 that can block well and has party synergies. Um, the Grill Draws Mucklord, even though it has plus 1 plus 1 counter synergy, it just needs to die. And the opponent can just um, easily just um, um, avoid blocking this or put a 3 toughness blocker in front of this. And, you know, a 3 man 2 3 is not very impressive unless it has abilities. Vanquish Weak, another so strong versatile removal spell for smaller creatures and it's in at its speed. Um, yeah, Tutorial, Tutorial Scythe Cat, one of the best green commons in the set. Another great um, creature that must be dealt with ASAP, or else it's just going to grow large with the Landfall. So Landfall is a strong mechanic in this set. Um, it's not as broken as it was in, I guess, previous Zendark Zendikar sets, but the fact that the fact that you can just turn your lands into value or spells in the late game is pretty good. So, like, it can prevent Flood by just playing lands. Um, Draga Visionary, excellent green common. Another excellent green common just draws a card, replaces itself, trades into any three toughness creatures, and, um, yeah, helps with the party mechanics, so this is a high pick, um, it, for drafts, Skyclave Shoutcat, I'm glad I picked this up, perfect in the plus one, plus one counters deck, I was gonna pick something else out of this, but I'm realizing that this is uncommon, I realize it's not gonna be picked up later, so, um, yeah, just very strong, like, in this type of deck, since it can just draw cards whenever plus one, plus one counter creatures dies, and you, it's, it's even a nice sack out, so this is pretty strong, um, then drawing out, obviously, a bomb, uh, didn't trigger it yet. Um, same with the Iridescent Horn Beetle. So we have some strong cards, but we just haven't triggered them yet. Haven't triggered Drana. Haven't triggered the Iridescent Horn Beetle too often. Um, um, also, could have killed a Bubble Snare with this, but I was a little bit too trigger happy. Um, Might have cost me that game. Um, or not. I think we won all of them. But there you have it. 16 land deck. Veteran Adventure. More of a 5 drop more than anything, since we have some nice, decent party synergy. And, you know, just... A five mana five five. Its vigilance is solid enough. So, um, yeah, um, happy that I went this direction with the plus one plus one counter stack. The sideboard stuff. We don't really need the Kazandu Stomper. Excellent curve topper for the landfall deck, but yeah, we don't need it um, since we don't have too much amazing landfall synergy anyways. Um, turn timber stack for the party synergies, but getting five mana five for gain three life is like whatever. We don't care. Could play two. Taruju, Tajuru's Blight Blade, since it goes well with the Rabbit Bite, but it's not a really good body, since Subtle Strike in the set also just kills it um, efficiently. Um, it's good with the Rabbit Bites again, but we have enough removal. We don't need, like, a one toughness, one power creature to trade off in the early game. Um, just one is fine. It's not a good attacker at all, and we do need to be attacking with this deck, um, quite honestly. And some other decent cards. Um, Ghastly Gloom Hunter has plus one, plus one counter synergy, but it's just too expensive with the lifelink going off. And um, the six mana, three, three lifelink flyer is okay, but not very exciting. Um, so there you have it. There's our deck. I'm going to take a quick snapshot of this and uh, use it as a thumbnail. And then we're going to move on to the final boss. And uh, either we get there or we don't. We still got up to uh, six wins, made back most of our gems. And um, yeah, the deck is still very strong, so I'm still satisfied with this um with the results not bad no two drops but we can top deck one we have an ooze gruel drowse i don't think i can mold his hand not the best hand but still keepable all right we have feed a swarm on turn two so if he plays anything stupid anything annoying we can just play this and kill it but um we'll see and that's an annoying card i'm happy to kill this right away i mean it has lifelink right um yeah it's just it's too strong so yeah another good reason why fetal swarm is good like like sure you lose life but it's just so versatile it's really cheap it kills anything solid card to start to draft with um, I think I'll lead with the Orin Reef, Reef Ooze. It's a little, little bit more risky, but the more I can attack with this early and grow this, it's the more better. Um, um, alternatively, the Ghoul Draft Mugglord doesn't do anything for us, so I'm fine just playing this out. I mean, alternatively, I could have played the Muck Lord and then put a counter onto it. Maybe that was better. Since now this leaves me open to a removal spell, and this might have been a huge misplay. I guess, yeah, I should have played out the Ghoul Draft Mugler, because he could now play his own Feet the Swarm. <sighs> yeah, not good. Since this is more of a powerful card. Inscription of Ruin, okay. Yeah, a little bit risky there, but what can you do? 
I can eventually just cast this on turn 5, which is fine. Vanquish a week is fine, but I don't think I need to vanquish on the core celebrant. Yeah, it's, there's better targets. Let's just play out the Tajuru, Tajuru's Blight Blade, play out the Gul'dras Overseer. Mucklord. I guess if I play this out last turn and then I played it out, played the Orin Reef Ooze this turn, um, maybe he was still using an inscription, but he had to tap out for his whole entire turn. Don't know if that was even reasonable. Alright, I'm fine at attacking. If he tries anything here, I'm just going to use the Vanquish the Weak. He can block my 2 3, who cares? He takes it. Wow, no blocks. I'm fine with that. Visionary can draw me a card. We can play in our Visionary next turn. He's going to gain a little bit of life. Blood Price. Okay, he's going to lose a bit of life here. I could honestly just Vanquish now, but I guess I'd rather just play Veteran Adventurer, right? For cheap. But I'll keep a Vanquish here in case he has, like, some sort of dumb pump trick. So I can two for one him if he tries anything. No blocks. Wow, no blocks at all. Um, I'll definitely take no blocks, but this Veteran Adventure is going to beat down pretty hard if he can't deal with this. Next turn. So just developing tempo here. I'm surprised he didn't even block the 3-2. He must value this um, Celebrant highly. I mean, he only gains, like, three life out of this. So it's not even a big deal. Um, I can Rabbit Bite here. But I think it's just better to Vanquish. Uh, there's no nothing in one black that punishes me here, so I think we just do it here. And then we can just get in for a ton of damage. He can block my 3-2, but he's still taking 8. He, should, he could block this earlier to save a bit of life, but... Yeah, he's down to 5, so we're in good shape. Unless he has some sort of board wipe, I don't know how he's going to get past this. Like, there's there's still the green dual land, um, the green tap land that destroys everything, so... That could be his out. But we still have some stuff to follow up with, so we're, we're in decent shape. Could have some binding. Okay, now here he's binding. So I could kill this and get him for 5 next turn, but maybe he's a little bit too greedy still. I mean, I could rabbit bite anyways. Yeah, I could rabbit bite. But maybe it's just better to attack and then develop the board. Like, I could get him for lethal, but... He could have some sort of dumb trick. So I think we move the attacks here. I'm fine just developing the Horn Beetle here. Um, yeah, let's just develop the Horn Beetle. Next turn we can play land, we can keep up Rabbit Bite, and then play a 4-drop. That's better. And we'll take it slow, I don't think anything will punish us here. Unless he has a board wipe, of course. But then he's at 2 life. We have two follow-ups to um, come back from, so. Could be looking at, like, um, Blood Beckoning, okay. He gains a little bit of life, okay. So he gets back, he goes back to five. Um, I think it's still game over. Like, if I kill this Cleric, what happens to Shepard? Um, guess I play the Visionary first, right? And then I can rabbit bite. I'll use the veteran adventure to fight. He blocks a three powered creature. And then we still get in for exactly five. So good games. Alright, GG's. Um, nice seven and two deck. Um, Zenicar Rising. I think this is a very good format. Um, been very impressed by it. And um, quite satisfied. So yeah, I guess we'll be cracking some packs. And uh, let's claim our prize. Alright, let's pretend we're doing a Zendikar Rising um, a draft. Uh, let's crack our packs, um, see what's there, and then um, we'll see. Alright, pack one, pick one. Um, 
I think Lith Lithoform Engine is a little bit too expensive to activate. Um, it can be a nice meme card. It's definitely very powerful in the control deck if you can get there. So, but Blue Black in this set is really a tempo deck, so it's not trying to be very controlling. Um, what's the control archetypes? I guess in Blue White, Azori's control this can be pretty solid. Um, especially if you can get to a late game and then spend a lot of mana to um, copy, but it's a lot of mana, so it's probably not the first pick here. I think Journey to Oblivion is a good solid removal spell. Um, white might be the worst color in the set, but it's still a very good color. Um, you can cast this very efficiently. The fact that it exiles any non-land permanent is quite nice, um, so um, it can deal with enchantments and artifacts as well. Um, and yeah, this definitely, um, even if you don't have a lot of um, creatures in your party, um, it's still fine, like, you know, 5 mana, 4 mana removal spell. I definitely think Deadly Alliance is better, obviously, because it's instant speed, and I would take Deadly Alliance over Journey to Oblivion, but I'm definitely going to take Journey of Oblivion here. Um, the second best card is probably, like, Into the Royal as a solid, efficient bounce spell, but I'm not going to take it over, like, Journey, pack one, pick one. Blood Beckoning, solid um, 2 for 1 in the late game. Another reason why Black is amazing this set, just 4 mana, return 2 cards, just really solid, and it has a flexibility of getting back just one, one card for one black. So this is also a really good card. This is Raptor, pretty good at the landfall deck, but easy journey to Oblivion, obli journey to Oblivion, if this wasn't this pack, into Royal, and if I want to do some memes, maybe the Lithoform engine, but again, it's really expensive to get going. But I guess if you have a powerful triggered ability, a creature that has a nice passive ability that you can constantly um, copy over and over, that's really strong, but you have to also make sure that creature survives, so it's kind of an all-in game strat, like a combo engine, but it's really hard to pull off. So, yeah, it's it might not be a good first pick. Alright, what's in this pack? Um, Alright, Maul of the Skyclave is literally a bomb. I mean, why does consider it a worst, but it's still very strong. Like, giving a creature flying in first strike right away is really good. And, like, just, just equipping this onto, like, even the smallest threats already turns it into a scary creature that must be dealt with. Because, like, even as a one-powered creature, like, it's already a 3-3 three, three flying double strike. So, Maul of the Sky Clay is eas easily the best bomb, best card in this pack. Um, if this wasn't his pack, um, pretty interesting choice between the Tangled um, Florahedron and the Grotog Night Runner. Um, the Night Runner, um, definitely very good in the aggressive red decks. And red obviously wants to be aggressive, so I'm happy to play this in any red deck. Even in the Warriors deck, it might have some X... X Decent party synergy, and like a 3-man 2-3 that just draws your card whenever it deals combat damage is quite strong. But I still think um, I would take the Tangled 4 Hedron over Hadron over the Grotog Night Runner, since I think Ramp um, in this set um, is a little bit more important. There's just a lot of expensive um, bombs in green, and um, and the fact that you can play this as a tap line is nice. And Mana Dorks are always great and limited, so probably take the Tangled... Um, Florahedron over the um, Grotog and Night Runner, but they're both kind of close. Um, they both kind of want you to be in a specific archetype. This wants you to be in aggro. Um, this wants you to be in the ramp. Um, but I think the ramp just has a lot more flexibility. Like green just allows you to splash in the set. So if you, so um, it just gives you more options. That's the reason why I would take Tangled Florahedron. But there's an argument that the Grotog Night Runner might be just better, since, you know, there's a way to give the two power creatures evasion with the common in this set, and just connecting and constantly drawing extra cards. Um, pseudo extra, pseudo draw with the um, Exile ability is quite strong. Best common is probably just the Pl Prowling Fellow Dardis card. Um, I heard has been a really powerful performer. Like, like a 4-man 2-3 isn't great, but like, once you put two, like, once this gains two counters, it's already like a 4-5 Vigilance creature. So it's a must-answer threat, and another reason why Landfall is strong in this set. Um, so yeah, probably take them all to Skyclave. It's, it's no, it's no, it's a no-brainer. Um, here, um, some nice dual color cards. Shadow Stinger is a dual color card. Don't fall, don't fall in the trap thinking this is a single black card. It's, it's, it's in a blue black deck. Come on now, like, you're not gonna play this in a black green plus one plus one counters deck. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, you might play this in a black red party deck, but that takes a lot of work, um, to get going. Um. So it's between the Cleric of Life's Bond or the Shadow Stinger. Again, I think Demir is more supported in this set than um, Orzhov. But, I mean, Cleric is also very powerful. Um, yeah, this is also a very strong card. Both of these are commitments. I just think the fact that um, maybe um, Demir has more support in this set, you would rather take prefer the Shadow Stinger over the Cleric of Life's Bond. Like... Um, White Black also has solid support, but I think the Mirror just has way more support. Um, 
and then like just getting this to constantly make the opponent mill three is quite nice to enable a mill and it's just a really difficult creature to block like a one four is not amazing i guess they can always double block and it's still a one for one so i don't know i'm probably pack one pick one i'll probably take vanquish the week over both of these two like these two cards are pretty good but they're again they're kind of a commitment to an archetype um demir is obviously the best color but i still think i'd take the vanquish here just to keep myself open and um yeah it's just a solid removal spell to see royal mage pretty nice in the late game wizards deck too um, but I'll take, I'll take Vanquish a week over both of these to stay open. Um, best common is, like, Jiraga Visionary. Rock Slide Sorcerer is a powerful build around two. Um, keep in mind, it only does one damage to target creatures. Um, like, I mean, a, to any target whenever you cast an instant sorcery. So, it's good if you have, like, some cheap ways to, like, double spell... Um, which, you know, does happen in the Blue-Red Wizards deck, so, I mean, I would probably first pick this, like, just, just maybe chain, like, dealing two damage can be fine, just to pick off some early threats. It is a commitment, though, so I don't know, um, you're, you're not gonna play this outside of, outside of a Blue-Red Wizards deck, honestly, I don't think it's that good outside of it. Since dealing one damage can be fine sometimes to pick off, like, one toughness creatures, but, like, you really want to deal two damage with this consistently, or even three, um, and that can be quite strong, um. But it does have a lot of upside. Alternatively, the more flexible choices would be between Jiraga Visionary or Garlid Gnarlet Colony. Um, yeah, both of these commons are good. Um, Gnarlet Colony, unfortunately, doesn't have any landfall synergies. Um, Jiraga Visionary just draws your card. I don't know. Probably still early on, I would probably prefer the 2-drop over the 4-drop. Because um, 2-drops are a little bit more important in Limited than the 4-drop. But Jiraga Visionary, also very strong um, common. Jiraga Silencer, pretty decent curve topper. Um, kind of reminiscence of the... Blight Breath Catoblepus in the uh, Theros Beyond Death draft. Um, Theros Beyond Death format, since it's also a 6-mana 3-2 that might kill something. But um, overall, okay common. Still really expensive. I don't know, I'll probably take the Rock Slide Sorcerer. I think it can be really strong in the right Blue-Red Wizards deck. It is a commitment, but I think the upside is a lot higher than the Draga Visionary or Gnarlet calling me here. But I would probably take Vanquish a week over it, or even Deadly Alliance over Pack 1, Pick 1. Um, okay, he's, this is a bomb. Um, obviously you want to play this in a plus one, plus one counters deck. Um, you can splash this still, um, even if you don't have plus one, plus one counter synergy. It still replaces itself if, since, if it dies. So, it's a nice payoff for the black-green deck. It's also a nice enabler, since, um, like, um, like, if any of them dies, this also grows. So, yeah, this is a powerful bomb. Um, easily the first pick. If this wasn't this pack, there's also Low Mage's Familiar. Per Tactician isn't bad. It's a still a really good card. But you need to have Warrior, so it's going to be best, best at red, white. So it's more like a red, white, gold card. Low Mage's Familiar, fine. Ramp, car, good blocker on turn three. Excellent blocker. And then you can just gain a bit of light to stabilize um, later on. Field Research, also a good common. Um, but yeah, probably the Grack Maul, but if this wasn't this pack, pretty difficult decision between all three of these. Probably take the Fuel Research to stay open. Um, Divination's always good and limited. I mean, actually, the question you have to ask yourself is, is Divination good and limited in this set? And I think it is. I think it's very good in this set. But if it's not good in the set, it's obviously a very hyper-aggressive set. Um, but in this set, I think it's long and grindy enough. Not as long and grindy as Dominaria, but it's kind of like medium speed that Fuel Research is still pretty solid, so... Um, but I will take the Grokma here. No doubt, pack will pick one. Grokma, Grakma. Terjuru Paragon. Um, you're not trying to do party support in um, green. So I don't know how good this card is. A 2 mana, 3 2 is fine. And you have the ability to um, draw a card if you can synergize the party mechanic. But uh, again, green isn't trying to do the party thing. Like, if you can net a card out of this, it's pretty good. Five mana, three two that draws you a card. But usually, Jiraga Visionary does the th same thing. It's a four mana, three two that draws you a card. So I don't know how much you want to rely on this just to draw a kicker spell. So it might not be that good. Um, what's base camp? Nah, not that great. I don't think it's necessary. I think the card here is to take his intended healer. Sure, it fits into the black white life fiend deck, but it's a powerful payoff card. Um, just being able to give an Artari clear life gain and um, gain life and then create one one cat creature tokens is quite nice and you know um and you're gonna gain life cons there's a lot of ways to gain life in this set um um there's a mind rod effect that also gains your life um 
yeah, there's just so many ways to gain life that tend to heal her. I think I, it's higher upside than if there's your root paragon, since green is not trying to do party that much. And yeah, if I end up in black, green, white, I don't want to miss out on this card. So it's definitely higher upside. I, like, I mean, I guess Exhibition Healer is also another nice life gain payoff. Like, a 2 man 2-2 two -two Vigilance Lifelink is very strong. Like, just being able to just give this lifelink in a Cleric deck is really good. So, probably takes a Tendent Healer, and hopefully we can pick up these Expedition Healers at common. Alright, Inscription Insight, probably the best blue card in the set. No, actually, Low Mage's Domination might be better. I don't know. This one's just very flexible. Like, if you can kick this in the late game for 8, like, it's not only... It's it's a powerful balance spell. Um, it can draw you two cards, and then you just generate a creature. It's very good. Um, alternatively, casting this on 4 is also very flexible. Scry 2, draw 2 is very good. Put the opponent back by balancing your stuff. And then, just generating a creature. Inscription and Insight is obviously very good. Probably the first pick. If this wasn't this pack, probably take the Grotog Night Runner. Um, I think it fits into any red deck, um, and red wants to be very aggressive, and if you can connect and draw cards off of this, it's good, quite good. Um, definitely better than the Goma Father Vanguard, um, since it doesn't commit you into Warrior's Archetype. This is, um, this is kind of like, um, um, a, um, hidden red-white gold card, since that's really the archetype where you want to play lots of Warriors to get the highest payoff for Goma Father Vanguard, but I think it's the Inscription of Insight followed up by the Grotog Knight Runner. So there, there you have it. Um, good draft. Might fire off another one. Um, we'll see. But um, yeah, I've been digging Zendikar Rising a lot. I think this is an excellent limited format. Um, so um, I'm definitely going to be um, happy drafting this in the future. Um, we'll see if it beats Dominaria. But a lot of people have been saying that this is like Dominaria 2.0. So anyways, um, hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, stay safe. Take care. Bye.